Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 25 mini series with the Seattle Mariners. And we are through the first month of the season. Uh, the big news was that our ace, George Kirby, going to be out for the year with elbow ligament reconstruction surgery, uh, got injured in the first game of the year. So that was certainly not what we were looking for, but still a solid start for Seattle, 17 and 13. We're up two games on the Rangers and two and a half on the Astros in the American League West. A couple of new additions, uh, Paul Goldschmidt and Michael Conforto, two of the better offensive players on our team through this first month of the season. And uh, just got some good news. Gregory Santos, who started the year on the IL, has uh, done a rehab assignment in AAA for almost two weeks now and we've decided to bring him back up as well. So uh, we're getting relatively healthy. Uh, shortstop Dylan Moore, utility infielder for us, still out on the IL for another few days. And then we also have one more player on a rehab assignment, and that's the reliever Matt Brash. He just started his assignment in AAA Tacoma. Uh, he has not even uh, pitched there yet, so he'll probably be off the team for another week or so at least hopefully we can get him two or three outings over that next week and then maybe decide to bring him up and then at that point this is kind of the team that we've got Moore will be back Brash will be back and uh, Jackson Cower and George Kirby going to be out for the year so no use uh, thinking about having their return because uh Hopefully we'll see them in spring training next year, but it's very conceivable they might not even begin any uh, real baseball work until a rehab assignment once the season is already underway. And we've simmed ahead to the middle of May. Uh, we're still in first place, but the race is certainly getting tighter. Only up half a game on the Astros and one and a half on the Rangers at this point. Did get uh, one of those typical OOTP things. Uh, Mitch Garver uh, wants to be part of the starting lineup. Um, he did come over here in a trade. Um, it's weird. They say we acquired him in a trade in March of 2022, but he played with the Texas Rangers last year. Uh, regardless, He's only hitting a buck 96, uh, so it's kind of a weird time for him to be flexing about needing some playing time. Uh, certainly like the combo that we have right now of Garver and Rally at catcher. So uh, hopefully, even though Garver is playing primarily against left-handed pitching, we can keep him relatively content, and hopefully he'll be more productive with the bat going forward as well. Uh, not expecting it to really turn into much of anything, but uh, still an odd time for him to be uh, complaining about playing time when he is uh, batting below the Mendoza line of a uh, former Seattle Mariner, Mario Mendoza. And as we head into Memorial Day, uh, the Mariners play in our worst baseball of the season. Two and eight in our last ten. We've lost three in a row at this point. And uh, we're sitting at 27 and 27, a 500 record, two and a half back in the division uh, behind both the Astros and the Rangers at this point. And we've dipped so far at this point that we're also uh, two games out of the final wild card spot in the American League. So uh, certainly struggling at this point. Uh, season is not lost by any means relatively early in the season, only 54 games in, so only one third of the way through. And uh, we just hit a little bit of a uh, tough patch for the team. Hopefully we can play a little bit better uh, in the month of June. And uh, would certainly expect this team to be above 500 when we get to the midway point of the season. At which point we can start figuring out exactly how this squad looks. And uh, hopefully figuring out what, if anything, we can try to do to improve our chances of guiding these Mariners into the playoffs in the trade market. 
And we played a little better in the final days of May to get to June 1st with a 31 in 28 record. Taking a look at our team statistics, uh, one game below 500 for the month of May. We are in second place in the division, two games behind at this point. The offense still doing well, fifth or tied for fifth more accurately in the American League in runs scored, uh, but the pitching disappointing, 10th in runs allowed. Our bullpen ERA is actually pretty solid, 3.44, third in the league, but our starters rank 12th in the American League in ERA. Taking a look at our pitching, uh, you can see the best ERAs on the team are 423 and 429 from Gilbert and Castillo. Wu, Bryce Miller, and Austin Voth all have higher ERAs than that. Wu, in particular, has not been great since he got off of the IL. Do like the end of our bullpen. Andres Munoz, 253 ERA with 10 saves. Gabe Spire still has not allowed to earn run this year. Gregory Santos uh, still kind of working back from that injury, 6.75 ERA on the year, but it's admittedly in a very small sample size of just eight innings at this point. And Matt Brash also in a small sample size after he got back from the IL, 2.45 ERA in three and two-thirds innings on this 2024 season thus far. And we've made it to our midseason evaluation, and it's definitely a mixed bag. Uh, we're only half a game behind in the division, and we would be the second wild card in the American League if the season were to end today. And we're also 7-3 and three over our last 10 games. So from that perspective, feeling decent about how the season has gone so far. That said, the record at 42-38 and 38 is only four games above 500. Certainly we're hoping uh, for better than that, and clearly with the injury to our ace, Kirby, uh, kind of question a little bit how prodigious this team is going to potentially be in the playoffs. Uh, so we're going to do a mid-season review shortly before we finish off this episode when we get to the month of July. But certainly I'm thinking at this point that adding an arm to the rotation is the most obvious way to potentially help this team. Looking at our midseason review with owner John Stanton, he's excited that the team's over 500. Happy that we brought in Goldschmidt since he upgraded first base for us. And he also uh, is a former MVP. Uh, he's not pleased that we haven't extended George Kirby. Uh, I wonder if he understands that uh, with elbow ligament reconstruction surgery and the fact that Kirby is still looking for $26 million a year over nine years, uh, we probably should wait to see exactly what he looks like on the other side of that surgery before potentially extending him. He's also not thrilled that Cole Young is the best prospect in our system. Uh, Young is having a great year in his introduction to Double A this year, hitting 357 with 10 homers and 39 ribbies and 213 at bats. So I'm still excited about his future, even though ownership uh, doesn't think he's quite a good enough prospect to meet their demands, and they're also not happy that we haven't built up our farm system, but uh, we haven't had an opportunity to draft anybody yet. And we also haven't had an international amateur free agent period yet. So uh, don't really know how he can be that disappointed in our progress because uh, we haven't even had uh, a significant lever to press in terms of building up our farm quite yet. That said, the season's still going fine. It's just not as good as I probably hoped it would at the start of the season. And as has often been the case over the last couple months of this season, we finish off the month of June kind of meh, 44 and 42 here as of uh, July 1st. So two games over 500, two out in the division, still holding on to the second wild card spot, uh, just a game up on both the Yankees and the Rays. 
and only a game and a half up on the Royals, the Angels, and the Astros. So a very uh, tough battle in the American League for the wild card this year. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to play a bit better going forward. You can see we've been below 500 two consecutive months now after the respectable start. We've slipped to ninth in the American League in runs scored, but we have improved to fifth in runs allowed. Uh, bullpen ERA is below three, and our starters ERA is up to middle of the pack in seventh. So we've been pitching better recently, uh, but the offense has definitely taken a turn in the wrong direction. The only thing we do really well is hit homers. Uh, rank fourth in the American League with 120 dingers at this point on July 1st. Everything else, uh, we're kind of a middle or back of the pack type of offensive team. Pitching-wise, a little better, uh, kind of in the better part of the league or the middle of the pack in most categories. And our defense is also relatively mediocre as we sit here on July 1st. And not surprisingly, all of our pitchers are doing better since the last time we checked in. Uh, Castillo and Gilbert both having pretty solid years, have the ERAs below 4. Gilbert in particular has a 4.2 war at this point, despite his 5-5 five and five record. Uh, has a very good 5.3 strikeout to walk ratio, a 57 fit minus, and a 2.72 Sierra. So he has been pitching very well over the last month, month and a half. Uh, Brian Wu pitching better, Bryce Miller and Austin Voth also better than they had been. Still think that Voth would be an obvious upgrade for us to try to make if we are able to bring on an arm to help us in the rotation. Munoz and Spire uh, continue to pitch very well out of the pen, and Santos has been doing better late as well. Uh, Tyler Saucedo, Ryan Stanek, Edward Bizzardo, Cody Bolton, and Matt Brash have all been good to respectable in the bullpen this year. So adding a frontline starter to kind of fill in for Kirby uh, would be something that would clearly be helpful to us and I think help our chances of winning. Take a quick look at the trade block and see what's out there as far as pitchers and there are a few interesting ones Shane Bieber, Zach Eflin, and Jose Quintana all on the trading block at this point. Uh, some of those guys likely to be making pretty significant money uh, so not necessarily going to be easy for us to bring them on board uh, but we've got some options in the market if we can bring on a frontline starter at a reasonable price, I think that's certainly something we should think about over the next uh, 30 days or so until we get to the end of the month of July and the end of the trade period here in Major League Baseball. And we'll turn now to our everyday players, and I think there's likely to be some uh, low-hanging fruit to improve the team here as well. Uh, Mitch Garver does have the batting average up to 253 with six homers and 15 ribbies and 99 at-bats. Seems like his morale is normal. He's still unhappy that he's uh, in a platoon situation with a 116 WRC+. plus. He has ended up being relatively productive for us. Cal Raleigh, uh, 246 average, 16 homers and 43 ribbies and 232 at-bats, 118 WRC+. Plus. They're both solid defensive catchers. So feel pretty good about our backstops at this point of the season. Ty France, who's been in a utility infielder role for us this year, hitting just a buck 84 with no homers and 114 at-bats. A brutal 52 WRC+. plus. He's making pretty decent money. Going to be arbitration eligible next year. If anyone was willing to take him off our hands and he had a little bit of trade value, I think he's certainly someone we'd consider moving on from. Even though uh, with the fact that we probably won't re-sign Goldschmidt, that'll mean that we'll need to be likely restarting at first base next year. I uh, still just don't know that France is the long-time answer. 
Goldschmidt, the batting average has dipped to 240, uh, but he does have 17 home runs in 312 at bat. So he's put up a 117 WRC plus. Uh, not incredible, but he has certainly been a productive offensive player for us. That said, he's looking for four years and over a hundred million dollars at this point to take him through his late thirties into his forties probably not the way we're going to spend our money um, so glad to have him in the lineup this year glad that ownership is happy to have him on board but don't think he is a big long-term part of our future either Jorge Polanco hitting 231 uh, but does have 10 homers and 294 at bats that said the WRC plus this year just 83 after he put up a 116 a year ago for the twins not as productive offensively as we would have hoped, but still a respectable offensive profile, a respectable defensive profile. Got a team option on him for next season, depending on what the free agent market looks like. Uh, would think that we would consider moving on from him. Samad Taylor uh, hitting just a buck 56 and 109 at bats for us. Our utility infielders have been pretty rough. He's got a 50 WRC plus and has been below replacement level thus far here in 2024. Moving over to third base, uh, Luis Urias, 271 average with 10 homers and 251 at bats, 116 WRC plus. Uh, he's a respectable defensive third baseman as well. Put up a one and a half war on the season. Uh, another guy who's arbitration eligible next year. Given that uh, we're likely to have a decent amount of turnover in our infield this coming off season, and that Urias isn't going to be making crazy money, it's conceivable we bring him back next year, uh, especially if he continues to play pretty well. And perhaps uh, as we get revised scouting reports on him we think maybe he's a little better than he is today i don't know that he's a long-term solution for us uh, but he's certainly been more than respectable this year jp crawford at shortstop uh, 221 average six homers and 25 ribbies and 285 at bats he is really having a rough offensive season with a 74 wrc plus um all said, he's barely been above replacement level. A uh, guy who's making big money, uh, 10 million and 11 million for the next two years after this one. So he's probably going to be the a logical choice for us at shortstop going forward. But if there was a better option out there and we were able to move him off the books at some point, uh, I don't think he is uh, set with us for the long term can probably say something similar about Dylan Moore hitting 200 in 140 at bats does have seven home runs and he's also walked 14 times uh, so his WRC plus is 102 also 9 of 11 trying to steal bases still when all is said and done has basically just been a replacement level player uh, he's signed for about three and a half million next year could be back as a utility infielder, uh, but when we think about this group, uh, we've got Cole Young as our top prospect in the minors and would hope that uh, sometime in 2025, most likely in the second half of the season or perhaps even not until September, he could be helping us. Because I think that uh, although we feel okay about the team right now, particularly with Goldschmidt, in the infield uh, providing us with more pop than we would have had beforehand it's very conceivable that uh, half of these infielders turn over this coming off season so we've got an opportunity to make some improvements don't have any huge long-term commitments uh, but that's a strength and a weakness um, we've got the flexibility to make some changes but we've also got the potential that we're going to need to make several changes and we're not going to necessarily have tons of money to fix things. Moving on to our outfield and outside of J-Rod, it's, it's kind of a similar situation here. Uh, Taylor Trammell hitting just a buck 93, 10 homers and 218 at-bats. 
67 WRC plus. He's been a below replacement level for us uh, for a second straight year. It's hard to imagine he's a big part of our future. Uh, honestly, we probably need to be looking to improve around him in the near term if we're going to try to guide this team to the playoffs. Michael Conforto hitting 239 with 12 homers and 284 at bats has put up a 102 WRC plus. So in the context of our outfield, he's been relatively productive, uh, but not really a long-term answer for us. Mitch Hanniger hitting below 200, just a buck 87, does have 12 homers and 235 at bats but a 61 WRC plus, and he's more than a win below replacement level with uh, that brutal hitting performance. So certainly feeling like the corner outfield position can be upgraded for us. Julio Rodriguez um, not having perhaps the season we'd love him to have. That said, still by far the most uh, productive player among our outfielders, hitting 275, 17 doubles, 13 homers. 12 stolen bases, 118 WRC plus, and a 2.4 war. Uh, still feel like, according to our scout, he's got the opportunity to get much better. Only 23 years old, so it's not unrealistic uh, for some more improvement to be coming. He is uh, the cornerstone of this team, not just this season, but for many years to come, hopefully, with the uh, contract we've signed him to. But certainly would think is where... Uh, considering what to do really like catcher really like center field with rodriguez fine for this upcoming year or the really realistically the next three plus months with goldschmidt at first base but i don't know that there's any other position uh, that is completely secure so it's just going to be a matter of what is ultimately on the trade market and uh, what people are ultimately looking for taking a look at the trading block as far as batters who are available not necessarily a ton of high-end talent at this point mark canha uh seth brown guys like that probably could help us a little bit offensively don't know that there's a true difference maker out there though Brandon Drury could be interesting. Maybe he's a little bit of an upgrade uh, for the infield, at least with his bat. But again, I don't know that he's going to be a total game changer. You can see he's put up an 87 WRC plus this year. So it's really just a matter of the cost with a lot of these people. Um, certainly if we bring on Drury as a utility infielder for us, who's uh, perhaps starting against left-handed pitching and then playing occasionally against righties. He's certainly an upgrade from some of the guys we have in utility infield roles right now. Uh, I just don't know that it's realistic for um, with what the Angels are going to want for him that we're going to be able to uh, pay a price for him in terms of retention of his contract and then also what we have to give up for him that it would be something we'd be willing to do for a guy who might not be a full-time player and you can see there's definitely some options for him we might be able to to figure something out if we really decide that we want to move on um from a utility infielder like dylan moore Could certainly argue that maybe Drury is an upgrade, uh, but it's not an overwhelming upgrade. So we're going to have some interesting decisions to make over this next month. If you've got thoughts on what we should do, always helpful for me to hear them in the comment section. Um, it's been kind of a May year. I feel good that we're in the playoffs right now, but I don't really feel great about how this team has played over the first 86 games of the year. Uh, that said, the goal is to ensure that the next 76 games are better than those first 86 games and we can hold on to a playoff spot. And I think that looking for some help in our starting rotation and certainly looking for at least one bat in the corner outfield that can give us much more consistent offense than we've gotten uh, from the likes of Trammell and Hanniger uh, would certainly help us
And with that, we're going to call it an episode. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and hope you have a great day.